So, so my name's Anne Chapman. I was uh, formerly um, uh, co-chair of, of Greenhouse Think Tank. And uh, this is uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight is from a report I wrote a couple of years ago now, or was it one year ago? A couple of years ago, um, about just transition in agriculture. So it was for Greenhouse Think Tank as part of a project that we did with the Green Euro European Foundation about uh, just transition. And on the right there, you can see that's the cover of the book that uh, that project produced. So um, there's a re my um, Just Transition Agriculture report, which is about 20 pages long, and then that ended up being edited down to form a chapter of the book. Um, so in the report, I talk about three types of farming and what their aims are. So you've got the modern industrialised agriculture, which, which we've had since the Second World War. And really the aim of that seems to be to increase output primarily. And then regenerative agriculture. And you can see this is something that sort of come from lots of uh, innovative farmers. And a lot of them see it as really being about increasing profit per hectare. Uh, not necessarily through increasing output, but uh, but thinking about profit per hectare rather than output. So getting profit through reducing inputs, for example, and importantly, through improving the health of their soil and that being the underlying foundation of their farm business and producing high quality food. Whereas then you can see other people as doing what they're doing is really well. I call it farming for nature. So things like conservation grazing where the aim isn't primarily about producing food. Food is a byproduct of activities that are carried out primarily to improve um, natural habitats, uh, natural processes, etc. So just a bit, I've got a couple of bits about agriculture, what's wrong with industrial ag agriculture, which probably people sort of might know more or less about. And uh, you know what is what are the characteristics of it? So you can see a sort of typical picture here of big machines in a field of wheat or some sort of cereal crop, and you know there's nothing else that we can see growing in that picture apart from the crop. So we've got the mechanisation of the big machines. We've got a simplification of the whole system. Uh, which is which is made possible through the chemical arsenal that has been introduced since the Second World War in particular. So with artificial fertilizers, pesticides, medication for livestock, which is one that people aren't so aware of, all the the um, uh, the the wormers and things that uh, livestock farmers could put on the backs of their cattle, to then then comes out in the dung, and means that the the dung isn't um, it's sort of is isn't so good for the um, dung beetles, for example. It kills the dung beetles, so you don't get the dung beetles incorporating the dung into the soil so quickly, and it becomes this vicious cycle of, um, uh, yeah, of sort of poison, if you like. And then also with this has come new breeds of plants and animals. So the cows in the field now are generally not the cows you would have seen seventy years ago. They're different animals, particularly with dairy. The sort of the production of the dairy cow has increased enormously to the extent that the dairy cow, the modern dairy cow, is a fragile beast that needs uh, a lot of the right sort of food, gets lame easily, gets sick easily, and needs lots of medication to keep them to keep them healthy and lots of care and attention to keep them alive. And isn't they robust? And then. Along with this, and perhaps you can say it's the cause, is that there's the concentration of the supply chain upstream and downstream of farmers. So, uh, and, and in which farmers have very little power over the cost of their inputs or the cost of their, um, or what they can get for their outputs. And this results, as we know, in no space for wildlife, pollution, uh, and also a lot of livelihoods in the country. The number of people employed in agriculture has drastically declined. Lots of farmers have gone out of business. And also we've got hunger in the midst of oversupply uh, globally in particular. So just to say, this is a bit more about, because lots of people think about intensive farming and they think about 
intensive um, uh, livestock farming. But actually, the livestock farming, that intensive livestock model is made possible by the intensive um, arable production, which is, enable, which is able to produce grains, maize, rice, wheat, uh, uh, very cheaply in huge quantities. So those grains now provide over 40% of our calories, resulting in a sort of with a, an un, a cheap but unhealthy diet. And, and, and then we feed the excess to, to the chickens and pigs in particular and to cattle to a certain extent. And we waste a load of food and exporting ex excess grains to less developed countries destroys their local farm economies and leading to hunger in those places because because they're not they haven't got a sort of thriving rural economy and also um you've got the so this is the the pollution by nitrogen is something that i think people are, lots of people are aware of the problem of methane from cattle but they're not so aware of the problem of the over the oversupply of nitrogen so on the on the left there, you've got the, the nitrogen cycle. So you've got nitrogen taken out of the air by nitrogen fixing bacteria, and then it ends up being going back into the air. But in the current system, we have uh inputs. So this is in the in the sort of Europe, Western Europe in particular, we've got two massive inputs of nitrogen into that system. We've got the ammonium nitrate fertilizer, which is the artificial fertilizers that farmers put in their fields, and we've also got the, uh, the protein-rich feed material like soya, which is imported from South America in particular, and then fed to livestock. Oops, sorry. Oh, there we go. I'm just trying to uh, move my, my little thing with the pictures in so that I can see, see my slides. Anyway, so this, then this comes out at the other end in these different forms of nitrogen pollution. So you've got an ammonia, which causes air and water pollution and nitrates, which is which is causing uh, eutrophication of water of water courses, and nitrous oxide, which is a, a greenhouse gas. So, and this is what they've got in Holland. They've got this massive uh, argument at the moment about the farmers being told to reduce the, the amount of livestock. Actually, they should just cut down on the amount of nitrogen fertilizer and feed that they could import, then they would have to reduce the amount of livestock as a, as a sort of consequence of that. But, you know, that's part of the, the you know, this is what they're grappling with, the, 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 nit the nitrogen pollution of the Dutch environment, which isn't confined to the Dutch environment. It's also that we have the same problems here. Anyway, so, so watch the future. So one vision of the future is this land sparing future where we carry on with this Sorry, intensive just to let you know two minutes oh dear intensive go in some places and then and then we uh we rewild everywhere else and and i think there's various problems with that which um you know i don't really think it's possible this the intensive system isn't sustainable and what's to stop the continued expansion of industrial intensive livestock to use all those excess grains and instead, I suggest two ways forward. One is regenerative agriculture, and uh, which has these five these principles of limit, limiting soil disturbance, keeping the soil covered, increasing diversity of crops, uh, livestock, and enterprises, and integrating livestock into the into the farming system because animals are always part of an ecosystem. So, you know, moving away from the situation we've got in this country where we've got arable on the east and livestock on the, on the west, we need to have more mixed farms. And, um, you know, there is a lot of interest in, the, in that from farmers in this country, but it isn't always easy. And there's, you know, it's not a sort of necessarily an easy journey, which I'll probably... And also in, in other areas, perhaps we need to prioritise the recovery of nature and do farming activities, as I've mentioned, for um, for that that the, 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 the tar really about recovering nature with food as the byproduct. So these are a cattle near near me in, in Lancaster of the Morecambe Bay Conservation Grazing Company, and they're they're grazing. There's an area near us which is where most of the land is now owned 
by conservation organisations and they've realised that they need to have that land grazed rather than simply, um, you know, if you stop farming on it, which is what had happened, then uh, the, the quality, the biodiversity declines. Uh, and anyway, so if you want more information on regenerative agriculture and farming, including the case studies, videos, there's a couple of interviews with a couple of farmers and some podcasts now as well. And they're all on that. You can get to them all through that uh, link on the Greenhouse website.